Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today, I will be discussing various techniques that you can use to reduce complexity of your designs during formal verification. Formal verification is a very powerful technique that you can use to ensure that your designs are correct and reliable. But it comes with its own challenges. FE can be really complex and a time consuming process, especially if the, if the design is very big and complex. There are a number of ways that you can use, number of techniques that you can use to reduce the complexity of designs while you do formal verification. I'm broadly dividing them into three categories, basic, intermediate, and advanced. In the last two videos, we discussed three, two, in fact, four basic techniques, uh, parameter reduction, cut pointing, black boxing, and the use of symbolic variables. In this session, we're going to discuss, discuss something that's more interesting. Um, in fact, something that we should have considered in the first session itself, that is over constraining. As you see in this slide, there are uh, multiple techniques in basic, which we are already covered. And then with over constraining, we'll be concluding the basic complexity reduction techniques. After this video, we'll have more interesting uh, techniques for reducing the complexity, which is uh, case splitting, abstractions, and then uh, abstracting out various memories, counters, reset, reset abstraction, etc. And then even even after that, um, if none of these techniques in basic and intermediate are trying to are really reducing the complexity, and you still see proofs going beyond. Um, uh, not going beyond certain bounds even after days of running your formal tools you do have many other advanced techniques at your disposal for example you can decompose checks you can use assume something called assume guarantees and there is an evo um, emerging area of research where you, where you do combine uh, the the power of a dv which is like this a normal design verification uh, by feeding test stimulus and checking the results and writing checkers and with formal so that's called semi-formal so there are n number of there are so many techniques and waypoints uh, are one of them we'll discuss many others and then there is a um, emerging technique called bug hunt um, we'll we'll see those in the coming sessions uh just to uh, reinstate or uh, uh, just to uh, clarify why we are discussing complexity uh, it is because uh, we see we will if you're working on a big design, uh, in fact, most of the designs in the industry, when you, uh, within a few months of starting, uh, a few months of working on it, you will see uh, cases where uh, you have written in enough checks to cover uh, all the functionalities as per the architecture or the design RTL document. And um, you will start seeing that you, you don't, you're not getting any more bugs, but uh, your checks are not going beyond certain bounds or worse, uh, your uh, tool keeps crashing uh, after one hour, two hour, maybe a day, and uh, it the machine keeps complaining high memory use. So these are, these are the cases where you have approached the limit of the tool and your computing capability. And it's up to you to decide how you want to reduce the complexity of the design. And then um, use the resources, which are the licenses or the computing memory available uh, with you efficiently so that you can go to deeper bounds and uncover more bugs. So that's, that's uh, why you need to know how you can reduce the complexity of the design that you're working on. Uh, let's jump into the key topic of the day, which is over constraining. Over constraining simply means uh, over constrain the design and limit the features, limit the functionality of the design. It can be very useful uh, during the early stages of doing formal verification. It helps the engineer in focusing her energy on certain functionalities of the design and not on the entire design uh, in the first, first run itself. So why why should we do over constraining? Why should uh, anybody go for over constraining? Because uh, the reason is it can catch bugs faster uh, for the functionality that you are, you are targeting on. Uh, because essentially you're reducing the search space for the tool and hence the complexity and the memory use for the tool. Of course, uh, it uh, it is worth noting that uh, if you don't deal with uh, over constraints carefully, you will see cases where you will end up missing bugs. So once you're comfortable with the design and you have uh, verified the functionality that you've decided to verify initially, 
then you can go back to the over constraints that you have set in the beginning and gradually disable them and then you'll start seeing more failures because of the new functionality that you have just disabled then you can work on them fix them and then disable more over constraints and so on so how do you do it so one option uh, so there are multiple options one uh, the basic option is to go for the primary inputs find out which are the primary inputs uh, that uh, uh, let's say you're not interested in certain values for a primary input uh, then you can uh, tie that uh, input to a particular value let's say if you want to disable something you can say that okay hey, i don't want the functionality tie this input to zero for the time being and the second more involved or constraint uh, once you get to know the design <clears throat> much better maybe after a few runs uh, of bringing up the design uh, would be to find out uh, the internal signals that are uh, that can be cut pointed and given certain values so that uh, you can over constrain the functionality from that point onwards uh, the simple example for the first case would be if you're working formal uh, doing formal for a CPU and you have certain interrupts, external interrupts which are coming at the uh, or you have some input signals which are coming from the interrupts blocks that are outside. So you can disable them. Or let's say uh, if we consider case two where you want to disable something internally in the CPU and uh, if right now if you want to focus on certain functionalities of an arithmetic logic unit alu and you don't want to focus on certain other functionalities you can say that hey my op code can now take add and subtract values and not other values with multiple multiply shift and all that so you can just tie them to limited set of values let's say 000 and 001 for example so these are the two broad options so I have mentioned at the beginning that over constraints can be dangerous. It's because if you forget to remove them, uh, you will write enough number of checks and after a few months, you will see that all the checks are going beyond, uh, all the checks are not failing. Then you will say that your design can be signed off. You say that formal is not finding any bugs up to this bound and then you sign off the design. So the reality is you did not enable certain functionalities because of our constraints. This is much, much worse compared to the case where <clears throat> you're saying that, hey, my checks are on, uh, timing out or my system is crashing or <clears throat> anything else because you are essentially uh, <clears throat> claiming that you did something which you did not do. So how do you, how do you usually fix the issue? Usually the, uh, there are two approaches. One, don't write any assumptions in the system where log files. You can write assertions and then convert them into assumptions and the tickle. So in a typical design verification flow, let's say, or any design any design verification flow, you, you will have uh, many, uh, let's say 10, 15 SV files and one tickle file, maybe one or two tickle files. So given the number of SV files, if you put some assumption very early on in the design bring up and forget about it, it's very likely that you will actually forget about it when you sign off. So. Uh, Whereas if you write that as an assertion in the tickle and convert them into assumption based on the kind of run you want to do in the tickle, then uh, in the tool, you can, uh, you can, or maybe in, by just by reviewing the tickle towards the end of, or uh, when you're doing the sign off, you can easily find out these other constraints. So uh, the, the conclusion is uh, write assertions in the SV files and not assumptions, convert them into assumptions when in the tickle. So second is whenever you want to write an over constraint, uh, try to add something like OC or OVC uh, at the beginning of the name of the assertion. So that in the tool, you can filter out these assumptions when they, when they're converted to assumptions uh, and then find out if, if there are any more active uh, assumptions with OC or OVC. So this helps. Uh, in ensuring that you're not missing out any over constraints. Now let me show you a, a small piece of code where, um, where you can see how we actually apply these over constraints in the design. What you see on screen is a simple um, code for a CPU. You have clock, you have reset, and you have, let's say an interrupt one coming from another block. So you, you just want to say that you do, you're not interested in that particular interrupt for now. So you add an assertion 
in the SV file. In this case, the design and the formal code are in the same file, uh, just to keep the <clears throat> keep it make it compatible with the OSIS tool. You just add an assertion with this particular name, and then in the tickle, you can uh, convert using certain commands like this. As uh, assume from assert, whoever is matching this pattern, right? So the second case is you have an internal block and you have interrupt coming from that block. So first thing to do is add a cut point for interrupt two signal coming from this block, and then uh, you, you write an assumption assertion in the system variable code, and then uh, convert that into assumption using the same pattern in this case because I have a star here, so <clears throat> it will convert internal and external both assertion and assumptions. And uh, of course, this uh, this is not a working code, and um, the keywords which I'm using is it uh, is specific to certain industry tool. So you might have to tweak it based on the tool that you're using. If you have watched the last two videos and um, complete watching this video, uh, congratulations! You have you have covered all the basic complexity reduction techniques in formal. In the next video, we will cover uh, advanced complexity reduction techniques. I try to post regular uh, formal verification content in my YouTube channel, Formal Intelligence. Uh, if you found this video useful, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel and share this video with someone uh, who is interested in trying out formal verification for their designs. Thanks a lot again for your time. Uh, see you next time with some amazing content in formal. Thank you. Bye.